Hello, welcome to Bespoke Unit. In today's video, Charles Philippe and I are going to explore the differences as well as the pros and cons between Goodyear welted shoes and Blake welted shoes. Hello, my name is Paul Anthony. I'm CP. And I'm going to be in the Goodyear camp today. And I'm in the Blake camp today. <laughs> so first off, both of us are going to cover the different construction methods and then we're going to do a little head to head of what's better, quotation marks. So mm. well, I'm going to start off with the, uh, the Goodyear here. I thought I'd put, I selected these two pairs of shoes because I actually do like uh, a Goodyear welted constructed boot. Mm. And I also have kind of a summer model where probably later on in this video, I'm going to actually argue for the Blake construction for a summer shoe, even though I have a summer shoe Goodyear <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Why not make it confusing? You know? exactly. So basically the way that a Goodyear shoe is constructed, um, it has three primary layers. You're gonna have the, the outer sole here, which is actually a day-night sole, which is a rubber sole uh, made in England. It's actually called, uh, interesting little historical factoid. It's called day-night because in Northampton, the factory was actually open day and night. So they actually refer to it as the day-night factory. And oh, they made it's the day no, sole, That's actually so. mind blowing. <laughs> Even though it's, it's not spelled like that, it's D-A-I-N-I-T-E. But yeah, the day-night yeah, factory. Yeah. But anyways, that's a side note. And then we actually have a, a welt, which is obviously refers to the Goodyear welted shoe. And then we have the upper. So within this construction method, you actually sew the upper to the welt and then the outsole to the, the welt itself. So then you have like a triple sandwich. And what this actually does is creates like a uh, distinct barrier between the, the inner of the shoe and the outer of the shoe. So one of the primary benefits of this shoe is its waterproofness. Um, the other main benefit of the shoe is actually it's incredibly easy to resole and can be done even by hand where you'd buy some higher end shoes these days and they'll actually be recrafted um they actually be crafted from scratch by hand and they're actually easier to get resold because it requires no special machinery some of the major cons of this construction method are going to be uh one uh kind of the cost of the shoe probably mm -hmm. we're looking at typically double a blake and excessively more um usually that's because this is a much more time intensive uh process uh, mm -hmm. material intensive and if you're going to put all that work and effort into the sole of the shoe then you're going to represent that with the upper quality lever. So then there's a kind of a two pronged reason why this is a more expensive shoe. Uh, the other con is you're gonna have a heavier break in time because mm -hmm. um, you've got that additional layer of lever. Um, and some guys might find that actually the shoe weighs more, which may be uncomfortable uh, for them as well. So just a quick recap, uh, pros of the shoe are it's resolable and it's more waterproof. So this typical construction method has definitely been favored in Northern Europe mm. um, because of the uh, colder and wetter climates. And then the cons are usually it's more expensive, it's um, harder to break in and it's a bit heavier. But with the advent of the industrial revolution and mechanism, uh, machinery, uh, we well introduced the Blake shoe and that's where I'm going to hand it over to Charles Philippe. And so, as Paul said, with the industrial revolution, the Blake stitch was born. The Blake stitch, there are two methods, there's the rapid stitch and the McKay method. They, there are nuances between the two, but essentially a Blake stitch involves using a special machine and it can't be done by hand, which takes the uppers uh, the, and the, uh, the lining, if there is one, usually there is, that is stitched straight through onto the sole and you can see the result is a stitch that goes all the way around on the outsole. And the reason why they can't be done by hand is obviously you can't get your hand in, in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got tiny shoulder for leap hands, mate. Yeah, I, okay, okay. Well, you got I'm tiny feet. We've got. Hands back in my pockets here. <laughs> I have got average size feet. Those are Dumbo feet. Hey, right, calm down. Let's get on with the. Anyway, the video. Get back to business before this gets it turns into a little domestic. So, the advantages of a Blake uh, stitch, well, as you heard earlier, the uh, Goodyear is known to be more expensive, the Blake stitch is cheaper. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is inferior. In fact, the Blake stitch, one of the advantages it has is because you don't use this extra wedge of leather, you have sometimes, and quite often, a narrow profile shoe. As such, as a result, it's more flexible, which means that it's going to be slightly more comfortable and give you a, a much quicker break in time, which makes it a more comfortable shoe, arguably, but there are exceptions to that rule. Uh, the disadvantages, as you can see, we do have visible stitching on the outsole, which means that it's not going to be 
quite as water resistant. In fact, water can seep through very quickly. So for that reason, you've got that stitch going from the sole exactly, straight, so you have a hole straight there. into the shoe. Yeah. Um, for that reason, these aren't quite as popular in Northern Europe, uh, in England or in uh, the Northern States. But in Southern Europe and uh, any more sort of warmer climates where it's going to be drier, these are much more popular construction method. Also, one of the other cons I've heard people say um, is that they can actually feel the stitch in uh, through yes. the sole itself. Um, and the third disadvantage I've also heard is that it's hard to actually find someone to resole these shoes, even mm. though they are resolable. It does require a special machine. Sometimes so where every Tom, Dick and Harry cobbler can kind of do, this is your bread and butter, but that's a little bit more tricky. Mm. So again, but you may be paying half the price for that shoe as mm. opposed to, um, you know, obviously double the cost for this. Um, pros and cons, but how Depends often? How often you resell yeah, shoes? Exactly, so, yeah. I mean, the way I look at the two construction method is, is like personally, I'll go for a winter boot in a in a Goodyear mm -hmm. constructed shoe for obvious reasons. It's a little bit more heavy duty. It's a little more waterproof. Um, and as you've got like obviously the boot around your ankle, it's a kind mm -hmm. of I don't really see the same break in time, and yeah. you're obviously expecting a bit of a heavier shoe. Also, I'll go Goodyear typically. For a pair of shoes that I'm going to wear more often, mm -hmm. uh, maybe your black cap toe Oxford, um, as it's a shoe that you may be getting resold more frequently, um, mm -hmm. and it's going to be easier and cheaper to get that shoe resold. On the other side of that same decision process is going with Blake Stitch for maybe summer shoes, mm -hmm. that little bit lighter, got less break-in period. Um, and also more for more refined dress shoes. Yeah, some more funky shoes. So yeah. you know, I might go with like a hole cut, for example, or a full broke here. Something that's a little bit more out of the ordinary, as it might be not be a shoe that I wear several times a week. It may be only a seasonal shoe or a shoe that's only worn once a week or once a month, which may not require being resold as often. Also, it's a very slick look, so I might go for a, a very high-end dress shoe um, look, such as a. Um, an opera pump, an opera yeah. pump, or a you know, um, you know, like a Belgium loaf or whatever it may be, mm. um, just to create that really slick silhouette where I'm maybe wearing a tuxedo, for example. Mm. So mm. I don't think there, I don't think that Goodyear is always a superior choice. Um, I just think it's become the kind of the default choice of a superior shoemaker because it's become that kind of mind share, and obviously it's probably had an influence because. You know, obviously, as we know, the best shoes are all made in England. So, and that is that. <laughs> <laughs> what was that look, Charles Philippe? The, the English Frenchman I have sitting next to me. So. <laughs> I think that we have arguments for many countries, such as, uh, for example, the craftsmanship in Colombia or in America. You know, so, okay, there are, there are other, you know, provincial countries mm. that, you know, have attempted to make shoes as good as the English. You know, obviously, I'm only joking. But, um, you know, so I think that's it. Well, North Africa. <laughs> Quality, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not going to disagree. This is a. This is another discussion. This is an unwinnable video. battle. Probably <laughs> annoying many people, but this could be a good time for me to say, please comment below on uh, what you think of the different construction methods. If you think one is outrageous, whether it's more expensive or whether it's a lower mechanized uh, construction process, and you always go with one or the other, would love mm. to hear that. Also, please comment below on some brands that you think offer great value for money in either category as well and also uh, you can check out uh, links where we actually review the specific uh, construction methods individually in our own uh, review videos mm. please feel free to go to bespokeunit.com forward slash shoes where we have over 200 pages of shoe style guides shoe brand guides everything around and, shoes were there and, and dress code guides dress code i was going to yeah. say we also cover dress codes you know what okay. what to wear with your shoes mm. you know we know what we we even go into the depths of color coordinating shoes with your trouser stroke pant color here this side of the pond uh, not not your underwear as we <laughs> were saying you know back in the uk so at bespoke unit we try to create a guide for the dapper mm. life and we have resources all around that end goal it so, gets deep it really does so with all that being said again please comment on this video if you have anything specific you'd like to add and contribute to the community uh, uh, the website is a live resource, so if you do comment there, we will actually put that on to bespokeunit.com, which we obviously can't necessarily do in these type of videos. Please like the video if you did like it. Please check out our other videos here on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and turn on that notification button where you'll get all the latest and greatest reviews from myself, Charles Fleet, and the rest of the Bespoke Unit team. With all of that being said, my name is Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And we'll see you next time.
Take care.